What's up, guys? This is Will Witt with PragerU. Today, we're joined by Anna Paulina. You are in Florida, aren't you? Yes, right here, Carol Baskin. Yes. Oh, we love that woman over here, don't we? <laughs> so you have started a new show on PragerU called Americanos. Why don't you explain to people who might not have seen the show yet what that show is and what it's all about? So basically, the goal behind of the show was to basically give people's perspectives on the Hispanic culture and why we're conservative through our stories and our messaging. Um, I think a lot of people think that the Hispanic demographic is just all one culture and it's not. You have Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, Colombians, Cubans, uh, Mexicans. And so what we wanted to do was take this chance and this opportunity with Prager, give everyone who I felt and who we felt were amazing voices and I think leaders within the conservative Hispanic movement, give them a platform to share their story. Um, so I know that mine is one of the first to be premiered with Prager and I frankly am really excited to share that with everyone listening. But um, that's basically the goal and the gist behind this, this series is to show that it's not just something you read out of a book. Um, it's not just stats, it's real life personal experiences that cause people to have the views that they do, especially when it comes to politics and conservative values. Well, I mean, you look at people and you find that you look at these minority communities. I mean, most of them will have conservative values. They actually just don't even realize it. Is that kind of what the show is trying to do as well is, is, is make people wake up and realize that, you know, the things that you believe in, you shouldn't be supporting the left because the things you believe in are actually conservative. Yeah. Um, in fact, I think, you know, talking from personal experience, I think my mom's a really good example. Her entire life, she wasn't in, like myself, a particular political family. In fact, she grew up in a really, really awful circumstance. And for a really long time, I don't even think that she realized that her values aligned with the Republican platform or the conservative platform, right? Because, you know, just because you're Republican doesn't necessarily mean you're conservative. So we'll talk about this from a conservative perspective. Um, and the older that she got, it wasn't, wasn't until it really, I think I became politically vocal that she realized because she saw the attack that I was coming under that um, for one, her values did align with mine and that had a title and that was conservative values. But that also too, I think she saw, you know, from a media perspective, and this is mind you, someone who wasn't necessarily the type of person to engage in the mudslinging, right? She's just looking at this from outside, outside her perspective. And she saw articles that would come out that would say, you know, different organizations I was working with were considered alt-right or like white nationalist organizations and they weren't. And so she, I think, realized at that point, like, look, the media does really, in fact, try to suppress conservative minority voices. Um, you know, you'll see in the show and the series that, you know, there's a reason why I'm so passionate about why I fight for the things that I fight for. And really, if you're not putting the truth out there, then you're only part of the problem. So these stories, this platform to have the opportunity to share those experiences and really to make people know and feel like they're not alone. It's so important, especially right now. I think one of the biggest issues is that the left virtue signals everything. So they tell, you know, Hispanics, Mexicans, people like that, that, you know, you have to be a leftist because we're the ones who actually care about you. And then they do something and they say, oh, it's because we care so much. And conservatives, they don't care at all. You know, I speak at Candace Owens' Blexit rallies and I'm the token white guy there. I've Just seen like, you. <laughs> you've seen me. Okay. Yeah. Definitely the whitest person there. But it, it's like, we're, we're the ones who are trying to support people. You know, conservatives understand that when everyone succeeds, then you succeed, you know, Hispanics succeed, all Americans succeed at once. Um, what do you think is the main message that, you know, people who, who aren't Hispanic or, or anything like that, what can they do in the help of this fight as well? You know, I think it's really important, especially right now with social media censorship to share information. And I know that might sound some, like something that wouldn't be as important, right? But you know, even with Prager, you're seeing that Prager videos are censored. My videos have been censored. Twitter hates me, right? Especially because of the messaging that I'm bringing forward. Um, so if you can share information, that's I think the number one, the number one thing that you can do to really help further the move, the movement. But also to you know engage in sometimes those uncomfortable conversations because I think so many people are afraid of being judged by what others might think. When you take that initial step forward, when you finally say, you know, what, I'm just gonna maybe engage in a political discussion or may maybe make it known that I feel a certain way about something. That's the first step to, I think, um, true mental freedom. And I think that that's something that, especially within the minority community, there's a lot of that going, going on right now. I know that when, you know, I shared some of the uh, snippets from the video um, and from the promotional materials for Prager, that if you look in on some of the comments and the responses on Twitter and Instagram, you had people, the first thing that they were doing was commenting on the color of my skin. They're saying, oh, you're, you're, you're whitewashed, you know, like you're European. 
I could literally break out my DNA ancestry and I have. And the reason I did my DNA testing is because, you know, in this job that there will be someone that eventually will try to say that I'm a liar. And so I actually got my DNA testing done. And, you know, to be Hispanic, I mean, at least for me, um, someone who is of Mexican descent, you have a lot of European, but you also have a lot of Native American. So I'm actually about a quarter Native American. And, you know, you put all that into the mix. I'm not the type of person to like use that as only the, like saying like, oh, look, I'm Native American or I'm Hispanic, so I can only talk on this. That's not how it's supposed to be. You know, we're all Americans, regardless of whatever our background is. And part of being an American is believing in a free country, believing in the constitution and backing up those different um, ideologies to go along with our policies. And so that's what I tell people is that first and foremost, I'm an American and everything else after that is basically, you know, that's just a bonus. We've been on quarantine right now, so I've been going out in the sun. I think I am darker than you, and I'm, I'm white. But <laughs> well, you know, in your sense, I have a white light on, so I didn't get the shadow look while we were filming. So yeah, an excuse, a, a sad I'll excuse. I'll you out of the water the minute I'm in the sun for like 15 minutes. <laughs> All right, we'll see. What What would be something that that you think people aren't hearing about on the mainstream media or on Twitter, social media? Something that you could tell people that is that is really the truth of what's going on in this situation? Because I feel like there's so many lies out there and just misinformation. Yeah, I think the number one most important thing that people don't realize is that the laws and policies we have here in effect, especially in regards to immigration and border security, all of those laws affect what happens in Mexico and South America and on the other side of the border. And when you have people here, and this is specifically talking on border security, that are encouraging illegal immigration, that are encouraging people to make a very dangerous journey here, you realize that you're putting those people in harm's way. And you do have this aspect of human trafficking. You do have this aspect of drugs running. You have this aspect of the fact that this is the American dream and encouraging people to come here only to you know, enroll in the welfare system is not that American dream. Government assistance, is not what this country was founded on. And you don't need government to succeed. You need hard work and effort, and that will bring you as far as you want to take it. Well, you see, I mean, one thing, if you're a Hispanic American who immigrated here legally, or you're a black person here who's here legally, whatever it might be, you know, illegal immigration hurts the bottom line for you. You know, if you're a, a Mexican person living in America who came here legally, an illegal immigrant from Mexico makes it harder for you to get a job, to raise yeah. your family. It makes it harder for you to get a job. And what people also to forget to talk about is these people that come here illegally are then paid in cash. They operate on cash societies, meaning they're not going to go ahead and call law enforcement if they get mugged or if someone ends up getting killed in their family due to gang violence, whatever it might be. So you create this subculture that's very dangerous and exposes these people and Americans to, you know, not good situations. So why would you want to encourage that? It's very expensive to come here. It's a long process. People have to take English classes. People have to learn American civics. People have to go through even health certificates. And yet you have people that are cutting the line in front of millions of people waiting to come here, which is very selfish in my opinion. And then you have politicians that have been in office for, you know, 20 years that are using this as a political talking point. They don't care about the people. They don't care about fixing it. And then you have Americans fighting each other. That's not the objective here. The objective is for us to be able to engage in these conversations realize that there's a problem and fix it. And when you have politicians that are making their entire careers off get, uh, you know, off lying to the Americans and not really getting us to discuss it, that's how you know that there's a problem. And I think that you know, it is our responsibility, especially within the younger generations, to stand up to say, hey, I don't agree with this. You know, this is my country too. I will eventually be past the torch. And now this is my turn to take and carry on this legacy. Well, it's very difficult because someone like you or someone like me, we go out and we say, you know, we don't support illegal immigration. We don't support a welfare state, things like this. And they say, oh, you hate Mexicans. You hate, pe you hate people like that. You know what I mean? Why do you think the left labels it that way? I think that there's a lot um, that they do in regards to making people feel like they're alone. Sometimes with these people, and I've, you know, I've, I've gone to different campuses and you will get the pushback. And I commend you for doing what you do because I know people can get rude they get abusive and they can get violent at times um and when you you know get people to think about what they've been told what they've been programmed to think the way that they react it's like cognitive dissonance i mean they completely shut down to it so i make sure in my messaging that i'm really saying like hey these are the facts like i'm not doing this because i hate someone this is coming from a place of compassion and you're really not helping anyone by encouraging them to do it the wrong way 
And you know, I will say that I've had family members that have come here both legally and illegally. And the ones that came here legally all support legal immigration because they know the process. And so there's nothing that sh should be made proud of someone that's done it the wrong way. It's not right. It hurts people on both sides. And frankly, at the end of the day, it's like, if you want to be an American, you take pride in this country, you're going to want to make sure you're following the laws too. It's my responsibility to my community, my responsibility to my country to make sure that people are getting the correct information. And that's the whole objective of this show. So I'm very, very happy that Prager has gotten behind this and been willing to push this forward. Yeah, well, you're doing amazing work. And some of the other stories that we have coming on Americanos are just as amazing. Incredible. We're really incredible. The best. The best. Yeah. In it. The best. We're, re <laughs> we're really looking forward to getting all these out there. Thank you for joining me tonight. And everyone, go check out Americanos, which is on PragerU.com. You can check it out there. Make sure you share this video with your friends. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you, guys.